Have you ever considered war to be the diplomatic equivalent of a palate cleanser? Me neither, but apparently that wasn't such a bizarre idea to the leaders who started the First World War, according to this next title. Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Jana, also known as Yana, and today I'm reviewing Catastrophe 1914, Europe Goes to War by Max Hastings and read by Simon Vance. Sir Max Hastings is an author, journalist, and broadcaster whose work has appeared in every British national newspaper. He has published 26 books, And rumor has it that he rises at 5 a.m. and writes 2,000 words before breakfast every day. Catastrophe 1914 amounts to about 25 hours of listening, and bear in mind that it only covers the lead-up to the war and the war's first few months. Knowing all of that, you might expect this audiobook to plod along at a very slow pace, but Hastings is a master storyteller, And he starts off by explaining that he's going to refer to people and events as simply as possible, which means avoiding overloading listeners with a lot of technical detail and extra surnames and titles. And ultimately, that probably saves several hours, if he'd included those. Hastings is also brilliantly understated in his characterizations. And I re-listened to some of his descriptions for maximum entertainment. For example, British Field Marshal Douglas Haig is described by Hastings as, quote, a man of his time in cool reserve, a Roman in his ability to preside over carnage without spoiling his lunch, if duty seemed to require this. It turns out that Haig was popularly nicknamed the Butcher of the Somme for incurring massive losses of British life, so I have to appreciate Hastings' tact there. He doesn't let others off the hook either. Many historians have not been particularly kind to the notorious Austrian general Franz Graf Conrad von Hotzendorf, but Hastings describes Conrad as having, quote, retained a boundless capacity for promoting disaster, unquote. One can only imagine the opportunities to neatly eviscerate characters had Hastings extended his focus to the entire war. And these are just two samples of the many character highlights that Hastings masterfully illustrates throughout this audiobook. Hastings also includes descriptions from people of all walks of life, including civilians and people from all classes and countries embroiled in the war. This modern approach makes for a much more relatable listen, and I appreciated stories and vignettes such as the example of the German diplomat who tries to sneak into his favorite Parisian restaurant after the war was declared, only to be booted out. Overall, this is an excellent audiobook with plenty of research to support Hastings' point of view, but it stands out most of all because he is a master storyteller who cares more about the human experience of war than the tactical minutiae. Hastings also shows us how leaders who initiated the war earnestly believed that it would be the martial equivalent of a palate cleanser and would help clear the air of nationalistic rumblings. The pageantry, chivalry, and even the gaiety of the situation quickly turned dark, of course, but that's the fascination I've always had with this war. It's like a brutal reality check for gentlemanly aspirations of fighting wars with 19th century ideals, such as taking turns advancing on your enemy, only to be brutally blown away by industrial shells and machine gun fire. Yes, there are definitely some grim and sad topics. It's about war after all. But Hastings knows how to balance the carnage with the quotidian. Simon Vance's narration is legendary in the audiobook world, of course, and he has the perfect tone for this piece. Even if you only have a passing interest in military history and trivia, there's a chance you'll enjoy this immensely. And if you're like me and you read about the world wars as a hobby, 
you're in for a real treat. As a special note, I'd like to thank John, an audiobook fan from Reddit, for recommending this title. That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you've not yet done so, please subscribe to Audiobook Reviews in 5 on your favorite podcast platform. By subscribing, you help increase the profile of this podcast and chances of other listeners like you finding it. I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well.